Are you over 60 years old and noticing that climbing stairs feels harder than it used to or that your legs just do not carry you with the same confidence? You might think it is simply aging, but here is what most people do not realize. A large part of this decline is not inevitable. It is something called sarcopenia, which means the gradual loss of muscle mass and strength with age. And here is the surprising truth. The very first meal you eat in the morning can either accelerate this decline or completely change its trajectory. Now, why does this matter? Muscle is not just about strength or looking toned. Your muscles are an active organ system. They regulate blood sugar, protect your joints, store amino acids for healing, and even communicate with your brain through chemical signals called myokines. When muscle breaks down, it sets off a chain reaction. Balance declines, insulin resistance creeps in, metabolism slows, and the risk of falls, fractures, and loss of independence rises sharply. In fact, research shows that after the age of 60, people can lose up to 1% of their muscle mass every single year, unless they intervene. Here is the hopeful news. What you choose for breakfast can begin reversing this process in as little as 24 hours. This is not hype, it is physiology. Muscle is built and repaired through a process called muscle protein synthesis. Think of it as turning on a factory switch inside your cells. That switch responds most strongly to the first big dose of protein and certain nutrients in the morning. Get that right. And you literally flip the system from muscle breakdown mode into muscle building mode. Get it wrong. Say with toast, cereal, or fruit juice, and you spend the entire morning in a state of elevated blood sugar and insulin, which suppresses fat burning and leaves muscles undernourished. Let me give you a simple analogy. Imagine your muscles are like a savings account. Every night while you sleep, you withdraw protein reserves just to fuel basic functions like immune defense and organ repair. By morning, your account is low if you refill it quickly with the right deposit. High quality protein, specific amino acids, and anti-inflammatory nutrients, your muscles grow wealthier and stronger. If you skip that deposit or only add a little sugar, your account stays in deficit. Over months and years, that deficit shows up as frailty, weakness, and slower recovery. So, in today's talk, I am going to break down exactly what science now shows about the connection between breakfast, sarcopenia, and leg strength. We will cover the root causes of age-related muscle decline, the exact foods and nutrients that trigger rapid improvements, how timing makes all the difference, and even lifestyle tweaks that amplify the effect. Stay with me because by the end, you will not only understand the physiology, you will have a clear, actionable protocol you can apply tomorrow morning. And if you are looking to protect your independence, energy, and longevity after 60, this may be one of the most important daily rituals you ever adopt. Here is what most people get wrong about protein after 60 years of age. They may still eat meat, eggs, or dairy, but the timing and the quality are often off balance. Many individuals load most of their protein at dinner, while breakfast is light, maybe toast, coffee, or oatmeal. That pattern sets the stage for sarcopenia. Here is why. Your muscles have what I call an anabolic threshold, a minimum level of amino acids required to switch on muscle protein synthesis. Think of it like flipping a light switch in a room. If you only give your body 10 grams of protein in the morning, the switch never flips you need about 25 to 30 grams of high quality protein rich in the amino acid leucine to activate that process in older adults. Research from the Journal of Nutrition confirms that elderly individuals require a higher protein dose per meal to overcome what is called anabolic resistance, meaning the muscle becomes less sensitive to smaller amounts of protein with age. So let me explain this with a simple analogy. Imagine you are trying to start a car. A weak turn of the key will not start the engine, it just clicks. You need a full ignition spark. That spark for muscle is leucine. It is an essential amino acid found abundantly in eggs, whey protein, lean poultry, and even fermented soy like tempa. When leucine levels spike in the blood, they trigger a pathway inside the muscle cell called M2R, mechanistic target of rapamycin. Think of M2R as the foreman of a construction crew. 
When it gets the signal, workers rush in and start building new muscle protein. Without that signal, the crew stands idle, no matter how many raw materials are sitting around. Now, let us translate this into an actionable breakfast. One of the simplest and most studied combinations is eggs with a high quality protein supplement, such as whey or a leucine fortified plant protein. Three whole eggs plus a scoop of whey gives you about 30 grams of protein, and importantly, about three grams of leucine, enough to fully activate M2R. Add a handful of leafy greens or berries for antioxidants, and you have a muscle protective anti-inflammatory start to the day. Another excellent choice is Greek yogurt with chia seeds and nuts. A cup of strained yogurt delivers about 20 grams of protein. Add nuts for extra amino acids and omega-3 fats, and you are approaching that anabolic threshold. If dairy is an issue, fermented soy like tempeh or edamame provides both protein and phytonutrients that support muscle recovery. What the research shows is that when older adults consume a higher protein breakfast, their muscle protein synthesis rates increase significantly compared to when they eat the same amount of protein later in the day. In fact, a study published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition demonstrated that evenly distributing protein across three meals, instead of skewing it toward dinner, resulted in up to 25% greater muscle synthesis throughout the day. That is the difference between maintenance and growth. Now, I want to stress that this is not about extreme amounts of protein or chasing fad diets. It is about precision timing and adequate dosing. If you are 60 years old or older, your muscles are not as responsive as they were in your 20s. You need to hit that switch hard enough early in the day to stop the downward spiral. If this is helpful so far, consider subscribing. I post content like this every day designed to give you practical, science-based tools for protecting your health and independence naturally. So the takeaway for this first core insight is simple. Aim for at least 25 to 30 grams of high quality protein at breakfast and make sure leucine is in the mix. That single shift can begin reversing sarcopenia and restoring leg strength in as little as 24 hours. Most people think of insulin only in the context of diabetes. But here's the truth, insulin is one of the most powerful levers that determines whether your muscles are nourished or starved. And breakfast is the most important time of day to get this right. Here's what is really going on inside your body. When you eat a high carbohydrate breakfast, think cereal, bagels, fruit juice, or even a so-called healthy muffin. Your blood sugar spikes quickly. Your pancreas responds by pumping out insulin, the hormone that clears sugar from the blood into cells. On the surface, that sounds fine, but here's the problem. High insulin not only pushes sugar into fat storage, it also shuts down fat burning and makes muscle less responsive to growth signals. Over time, especially after 60 years of age, cells can become insulin resistant, meaning they do not respond as well to insulin signals. This sets the stage for muscle loss, weight gain, and low energy. Think of insulin like a traffic cop. When traffic sugar is heavy, the cop waves it all into the fat storage lane to prevent chaos on the highway. But when that cop is always on duty from constant sugary meals, your muscles rarely get the building blocks and energy they need. They sit idle while fat storage keeps growing. The key is not to fear insulin, but to control the morning spike so that muscles stay sensitive and responsive. Research in diabetes care shows that older adults who eat a high protein, lower carbohydrate breakfast maintain better insulin sensitivity and greater muscle protein synthesis compared to those who start the day with refined carbs. In other words, what you eat at eight o'clock in the morning sets the hormonal tone for the next 12 hours. So how do you apply this? Step one, swap high glycemic foods for low glycemic nutrient dense options. Instead of cereal or white toast, choose a protein-rich base like eggs, Greek yogurt, or a plant-based protein smoothie. Pair it with fiber from vegetables, chia seeds, or flax. Fiber slows glucose absorption, preventing a big spike. Add healthy fats like avocado or nuts to further stabilize the curve. Step two, time your carbohydrates wisely. If you enjoy fruit, Pair it with protein rather than eating it alone. 
For example, berries mixed into a protein shake or half a banana sliced over Greek yogurt with walnuts. This slows the release of sugar, keeping insulin controlled, save starkier carbs like oats, sweet potatoes, or quinoa for after physical activity when muscles act like sponges and absorb glucose more efficiently. Step three, hydrate before caffeine. Cortisol naturally rises in the morning and adding caffeine plus sugar on an empty stomach amplifies blood sugar swings. Drinking water or green tea first helps regulate this response, priming your metabolism before your meal. One fascinating study in the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism found that when older adults consumed a low glycemic breakfast, their muscles used glucose more efficiently and insulin levels stayed lower throughout the entire day. That translates to stronger legs, steadier energy, and better fat burning. Let me explain with another analogy. Imagine your muscles are like a sponge. In the morning, they are dry and ready to soak up nutrients. But if you pour a bucket of sugar water over them, the sponge clogs and becomes less absorbent. If instead you pour a steady stream of clean water with dissolved amino acids, the sponge absorbs deeply and fully. That is the difference between a sugary breakfast and a protein-centered, low-glycemic breakfast. The big takeaway is this. Controlling insulin in the morning is not about deprivation. It is about strategic fueling. Choose a breakfast that balances protein, fiber, and healthy fats. Limit refined carbs early in the day. This keeps insulin sensitivity high. So when you do introduce carbs later, ideally around activity, your muscles use them for power instead of your waistline storing them as fat. Here is something that does not get enough attention in the conversation about muscle loss, inflammation. Most people think inflammation only matters if you have arthritis, or an injury, but the reality is that low-grade chronic inflammation quietly erodes muscle tissue every single day after 60. It is one of the hidden accelerators of sarcopenia. Here is what is really happening inside your body. When inflammation is high, your immune system releases cytokines, signaling molecules that in excess interfere with the muscle's ability to respond to growth signals. It is like trying to build a house in the middle of a storm. The construction crew may be ready, but the constant rain and wind slow everything down. This is why simply eating protein is not always enough. If the inflammatory environment is not calmed, the muscle cannot fully respond. Now, here is the good news. Certain breakfast foods deliver anti-inflammatory nutrients that directly support muscle health. One of the best studied is omega-3 fatty acids. Research in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition found that supplementation with omega-3s improve muscle protein synthesis in older adults, especially when combined with resistance activity. The mechanism is that omega-3s increase the muscle sensitivity to anabolic signals. In other words, they make your muscle tissue more listenable to protein. So what does this look like on your plate? Instead of a bagel with cream cheese, imagine starting your day with a smoked salmon and avocado omelet. You are combining high-quality protein with omega-3 fats and anti-inflammatory monounsaturated fats. Add leafy greens like spinach and you get antioxidants such as vitamin C, lutein, and beta-carotene that neutralize free radicals inside muscle cells. Another example is a chia seed and flaxseed pudding made with Greek yogurt or almond milk. Both chia and flax are rich in alpha-linolenic acid a plant-based omega-3, along with fiber to stabilize blood sugar. Topping it with blueberries as anthocyanins, compounds shown to reduce oxidative stress in muscle tissue. And let us not overlook spices. Curcumin, the active compound in turmeric, is one of the most potent natural anti-inflammatory agents. A study published in Nutrients in 2019 found that curcumin supplementation improved muscle recovery and reduced exercise-induced inflammation in older adults. Adding turmeric to your morning eggs or blending it into a protein smoothie with black pepper for absorption is a simple, effective step. Let me explain this with a simple analogy. Think of your muscle fibers as ropes. Over time, inflammation frays those ropes, small tears, oxidative stress, and micro damage. 
Anti-inflammatory nutrients act like protective coatings, keeping the ropes intact and resilient. Without that coating, even the strongest protein input cannot stop the ropes from slowly unraveling. So here are three clear action steps you can take. Number one, include an omega-3 source at least three mornings per week, fatty fish, chia seeds, flax seeds, or even a high quality fish oil supplement if food is limited. Number two, add colorful plant foods to breakfast daily, berries, leafy greens, or even powdered greens if fresh is not available. The pigments are often the antioxidants that protect your muscles. Number three, use anti-inflammatory spices such as turmeric, cinnamon, or ginger. They do not just add flavor, they change the biochemical environment in your muscle cells. If this is resonating with you, consider subscribing. I post content like this every day to give you tools that work with your body, not against it. The big picture is this. Fighting sarcopenia is not just about protein. It is about creating the right environment inside your body where muscle can grow and thrive. Anti-inflammatory foods at breakfast lower the storm so the building process can finally happen. Combine protein with omega-3s, antioxidants, and spices, and you set up your muscles for repair and strength from the very first meal. Here is something most people never hear from their doctor. The strength of your legs is not just about the size of your muscles. It is about the energy factories inside those muscles. The mitochondria, these microscopic structures produce adenosine triphosphate, or ATP, the currency of energy that powers every contraction of your quadriceps, hamstrings, and calves. When mitochondria are plentiful and efficient, your legs feel springy and strong. When they are sluggish, even walking across the room feels like wading through mud. After 60 years of age, mitochondrial function naturally declines. That means fewer energy factories per cell and less efficient fuel burning. The result is fatigue, slower walking speed, and difficulty climbing stairs, all classic signs of sarcopenia. But here's the exciting part. Research shows that nutrition, especially what you eat at breakfast, can directly stimulate mitochondrial biogenesis, which means the creation of new mitochondria. Let me explain this with a simple analogy. Imagine your muscles are like a city. Each mitochondrion is a power plant. If the city is running on a handful of old failing plants, there are constant blackouts. But if you build new clean energy plants and supply them with high quality fuel, suddenly the lights stay on and the city thrives. That is exactly what happens when you support mitochondrial health in your muscles. So what fuels these power plants? Number one is polyphenols, plant compounds found in foods like blueberries, pomegranates, and green tea. A study in Frontiers in Physiology showed that polyphenols stimulate a key regulator of mitochondrial biogenesis called PGC1-alpha. When PGC1-alpha is activated, your muscle cells start building new power plants. Number two is coenzyme Q10 and carnitine, nutrients that help mitochondria burn fat for energy. Coenzyme Q10 is found in sardines, mackerel, and organ meats, while carnitine is abundant in red meat and also produced by your body. Together, they help shuttle fatty acids into the mitochondria, like trucks delivering fuel to a factory. Number three is high quality protein in the morning. As we discussed earlier, leucine-rich protein activates M2OR, which not only builds muscle fibers, but also indirectly supports mitochondrial health. When muscle grows, mitochondria adapt and expand to meet the energy demand. And here is a fascinating study to bring this home. Researchers from the University of Copenhagen found that older adults who consumed polyphenol-rich foods and paired them with light exercise had significantly improved mitochondrial density in their leg muscles after just a few weeks. That translates into more endurance, faster walking speed, and greater resistance to fatigue. So. What does this look like in practice? A powerful breakfast for your mitochondria might be a spinach and blueberry protein smoothie. Blend whey or plant protein with a handful of spinach, a cup of blueberries, and green tea as the liquid base. Add a teaspoon of flax or chia for omega-3 support. This delivers protein, leucine, antioxidants, and polyphenols all in one meal. Another option, a pomegranate and walnut yogurt bowl. 
Pomegranate seeds are loaded with elegitanins, 